The first thing prayer does is that he opens you to the voice of God. The second thing is that he brings the presence over you. If you intend to manifest the influence of the kingdom, please understand divine presence. Otherwise, That's where some of these men have gone to. And when they speak, their words never fall to the ground. But in the name of Jesus, that presence will rest upon you. Let me show you two things. Number one, how that if you don't have power at work in your life, you are a victim. The reason is because God is not the only one who showed up. There are other spirits that also showed up. In John chapter 10 verse 10, he said, The devil cometh not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. So you don't need to do anything to be under attack. The reason is because a spirit has shown up and his intention is to destroy you. So the issue of power is not for fun. It's not for luxury. It's for your defense. Because whether you cause problem or not, there is a battle you will fight. The reason is because the devil cometh not but for to kill. So you don't need to do anything to be under attack. So long as you are born, you will be under attack. So if you don't have power at work in your life, in the day of trouble, you will faint. And he said, if you faint, it's not because your God is weak. It's because your strength is little. So he's telling you that everybody will fight. The question is whether you will or you fail. And that question is answered when you begin to know and deploy how to keep the power of the Holy Ghost at work in your life. He said, the devil prowls like a roaring lion looking for who he may devour. So the job of demons, the way you go to work every day and you are doing a decent job to sustain yourself, the job of demons is to look for people to kill, is to look for people to destroy. And so what you need to do is to carry so much power that when they are coming, they advise themselves that don't go here. This place, if you go, you will lose. This is why you need power because a spirit is, is, is moving to and fro the earth looking for who to devour the reason you will not be the one to devour is power and so when you find men who are not being devoured is because the devil judged and discovered power is at work in their life if power is not at work in your life you will be a candidate to be devoured because the devil is carrying out a spiritual census looking for those who have power and those who don't have power if he finds those who have power he will leave them hope you know when the sons of Sceva showed up he said Jesus we know Paul we know that means in the syllables of the demonic realm, they know those who carry power. And so what they do is that they write their name in the spirit realm. Everybody know them. They don't approach them. So the people the, the devil devours are those that is already chronicled in their structure and syllables that they don't have power. And so if you want your name to be known in the demonic realm, the way you announce your name there is not by saying, I'm my care. It's by power. Because when Moses came to Pharaoh, he didn't ask him the name of his God for a nomenclature purpose. When he said, who is your God? Moses dropped his staff. The staff became a snake. What he's saying is that my God is the God of power. And the way Pharaoh also responded is to call his wise men. And they too dropped their staff. When the staff of Moses swallowed the staff of the wise men of Pharaoh, they now knew who the God of Moses was. So the way you introduce yourself in the spirit is by power. And Moses showcased so much power that a point came, he became a god in Egypt. The way Moses dealt with Pharaoh is actually the way every man should walk on it. Moses will show up and say, let my people go that they may serve me. The God of the Hebrew have sent me. And Pharaoh will say, I won't. Moses will say, all right, since you refused, by this time tomorrow, frogs will visit and they will go. <laughs> See, you don't, you don't negotiate with evil. You power them out of your atmosphere. <laughs> Moses will go and rest. And then Pharaoh will go and say, please come, we're about to die. Moses will show up again. He said, please, please, I change my mind. Okay, because you have, they will leave tomorrow. They will go. After they leave, Pharaoh will now say, I won't. So that kind of thing is not negotiation by mouth. It's negotiation by power. Because there's an evil in the heart of these beings that only power can humble them. No matter what you say, they will argue with you. But when power comes, it silences the argument. I'm a traveling person. I'm in Sierra Leone. I pray for different people with different orientation, with different belief system.
tomorrow I'm in Ghana, I pray for different people. Next tomorrow I'm in Kenya. You will need something to follow you to have consistent results. Because sometimes you can go to a place, the people are excited. Another time you go to a place, the people are trying to see what you want to do. When you say shout, they say shout. Why? When you are praying, they are looking at you like this. Okay, let's see what will happen. <laughs> if you are traveling, you it's like carrying a cross. Every day is a new day. The people don't care what God did yesterday because what God did yesterday is not where they are. God did something in Ghana. They are in Congo. So thank God for what God did in Ghana. They want to see what God will do in Congo. So put your testimony of Ghana aside. Come to Congo and show God. Meanwhile, they believe that God will heal the sick. You now show up. And then what you deployed in Congo, you are now deploying it here. It's not working. So you need a lot of mystery to work for you. And so sometimes when you stand, God will now tell you, because you fear me, I will glorify myself. And so the reason God will heal in that service is not because you are anointed. It's because you fear him. Sometimes when you stand, God will now tell you, he gives you a word of knowledge. He said, there's somebody sitting next to the microphone, the speaker there. He has a challenge with his heart. The moment you say it and the person stands up, their heart will now open. God will begin to move. Sometimes when you stand, God will now tell you, sing this song. You will now start singing the song. Sometimes when you stand, God will tell you, pray in tongues first. You will now be praying in tongues. They won't know what you are doing. You are deploying different mysteries. And so, when God is now dealing with you in the area of reverence, it's not just because he wants to teach you reverence. That reverence will become your salvation when you are in a different country. When God is teaching you how to sow seeds, that seed may not just to be, be to prosper you. That seed will be the reason why God will act where your faith will fail in a strange land. And so there are many mysteries that are put together to engender different dimensions of glory. And so Moses will show up again and say, since you refuse, by this time tomorrow, lies will visit. So Moses was sending errands. Since I'm talking and it's not making sense, I will send Aaron through other agencies. And finally, when Moses came, he told him, there will be a cry in Egypt, such as have never been heard. All the firstborn sons of men and beasts will die. And he told Pharaoh something. He said, you will never see me again. <laughs> oh, God of mercy. When will this kind of generation emerge? Now, Pharaoh is the strongest person on earth at that time. Moses came to him and said, you will never. That means my coming before you is a privilege. And because you have abused it this nine times, this tenth one is the last. You will never see me again. And true to Moses' word, all the mighty men of Pharaoh drowned in the belly of the Red Sea. Because that night, when that plague came and everybody died, there was cry in Egypt. Pharaoh sent to Moses and said, please go. Carry everything. And Moses went. And to show you that power is not only against wicked men. Even nature will respect you only when you have power. When Moses was coming, there was a sea truncating and obliterating and impeding the possibility of crossing over. And Moses turned to God and God said, why are you turning to me? There is a power in you. If you don't know how to use it, you are, you are in trouble. He said, stretch your, your rod. And Moses stretched it. And Moses came back to tell us what happened in the spirit. Because God is able to do only when your own power is working. He said with the blast of his nostrils, he parted the Red Sea. That means God would not have used the blast of his nostrils except as the power in Moses was at work. So it, the collaboration begins from the earth. And you won't know the strange things that happen. That's not a casual miracle. Many things happen there. All the whales in the water were stopped. The activity of the whales stopped. The water parted. And the water did not just part. It froze. That means temperature changed. The temperature of the environment changed. Because the water froze. It became a block. Standing like a wall. And then those of you who understand about sea, you know that a sea is actually a pit. A sea is not a flat ground. I think it was Pastor Bolandi that brought that revelation. That means the earth grew up too. So many things were happening at the same time. When that wind passed, when they crossed, the Egyptians, they thought it was a joke. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 2, 
He said, by faith, Moses and the Israelites crossed the Red Sea. He said, with the Egyptians are saying to do, they were drowned. Because what was happening, Moses was in control of it. This is not a fluke. If he tells you tomorrow you will be blessed, it's not luck and chance. It's power at work. And so when a believer is talking, he needs to talk from power. When you tell somebody that this week a door will open, it's not luck and chance. Nothing happens by luck and chance. It's power that makes things happen. And so the reason you must know how to engage this miracle working power is because that is the only basis by which the voice of the avenger will be silenced. If you don't have power in your life, you are a victim. You are a prey, And the day of battle will reveal it. The second reason why the power of the Holy Ghost must perpetually be at work in our lives is because it is by power that God is glorified. Imagine if Moses wanted to start a school in Egypt to prove to the people that there is a God in heaven. Egypt was the school, the, the territory of philosophy and wisdom. The first civilization of knowledge was systematized and institutionalized in Egypt. You can't beat them. They are called wise men of Egypt. They were the first people that were addressed as the wise men. Wise men began from Egypt. You don't beat them with human intelligence. The only thing you can use to counter them is power. Because the language of power is simple and clear. It's either the blind eye open or it doesn't. It's either the deaf ears open or it doesn't. Power does not have ambiguity. Power is clear, is simple and is short. And so the only way God could be glorified was when power was at work. In John chapter 2 verse 11, after Jesus turned water to wine, the Bible said, this be the first miracle of Jesus and he did it that he will show forth his glory. That means when the power of the Holy Ghost is not at work, God cannot be glorified. He said, when I leave, he said, another comforter will come. And he will not speak what he knows or what he has heard. He said, he will tell you about me. He came to glorify me. And so the way God is glorified is when the power of the Holy Ghost is at work. And so the power of the Holy Ghost is necessary to ensure you from the rage the wickedness and the evil of this world and the power of the Holy Ghost is also the only basis by which you can glorify God in a way that nobody can argue if there is no power our God can still be debated but when power shows up it becomes clear that one is superior to the other the first revelation of God in the Bible is as a God of power he said in the beginning Elohim the word Elohim means almighty in the beginning, the Almighty created the heavens and the earth because God needed power to create a distinction between him and everything that is created. This is why the Holy Ghost came to furnish us with power. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, it says, not many days from now, you shall receive the Holy Ghost and not wisdom and not utterance and not favor. You shall receive the Holy Ghost and power because everything is in power. Wisdom is a type of power. Utterance is a type of power. Healing is a type of power. It's just the way we have light here now. This is power. This amplification of sound is power. This light is power. The AC working and producing cold sensation is power. Light is wisdom. This volume you are seeing is what creates. All of that is a type of power. And so when power shows up, everything shows up. And so the Holy Ghost came amongst other things, primary among other things, to manifest the power of God. And you need that power because your insurance is tied to power and God being glorified in your life is also tied to power.